Well, let's shift our attention now. The gold for oil deal is working very well. That's the controversial statement from the governor of the central bank, Dr. Ernest Ardison, who is justifying the policy measure in the face of rising fuel prices. The gold for oil deal was introduced by government late uh, last year, owing to Ghana's depleting foreign reserves. Government explains that the decision um, will uh, also reduce increased demand for the US dollar uh, while pushing uh, the prices of fuel at the pumps down. However, after months of running the policy measure, the effects at the pump have been minimal. Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Anderson, revealed today that close to 100 million uh, US dollars has been spent on the policy so far, uh, which in this view has worked or is working very well. To build reserves, to augment our reserves with the purchases of gold. That's how all of this started. And since the beginning of the program, we have bought 181,435.25 ounces, valued at around 348 million US dollars. This is, for the, this is for reserves, gold for reserves. Now, gold for oil, so far, we purchased 50,931 just about 100 million, in fact, the exact number is 96.8 million US dollars. But there is enough gold, right? There is enough gold. Uh, I am I'm, I'm aware that PMMC says that there, there is enough gold that they can buy to support the, the gold for oil deal. And Basically, for me, the issue is about, you know, if you have a government-to-government -government arrangement, which would allow you to buy refined oil at a much cheaper price than the BDCs would do, then we, we are helping the government, you know, bring in uh, refined oil at a cheaper price, which hopefully would eventually feed in to lower prices at the pump. So that's, that's the impact of the gold for oil program on prices at the pump. At the same time, the BDCs who would have supplied that, that portion of gold would no more be in the market looking for foreign exchange to go and buy right, to go and buy the oil. So you expect that the pressure or the demand pressure coming from that segment of the market also would be sort of reduced and indirectly help to take pressure off of the currency. So this, these are really the two uh, issues concerning that program, helping to take pressure of the Ghanaian CD and then at the same time using the government to government arrangement to bring prices down at the pump. And so far it, it seems to be working well. Uh, we can arrange for our director of financial markets uh, to give you the details of how all of this is working. Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, well, in spite of these assurances, the reality on the ground is pointing to a different situation as the Institute for Energy Security is projecting a surge in fuel prices by some 7 to 13 percent from the 1st of February 2023. Well, so let's give you a breakdown of some of the factors IES is pointing to. Uh, the IES is first of all talking about the world oil market, the fact that the international crude oil benchmark brand is increasing uh, and it's increased about 86.14 um, in terms of the US dollars per barrel on average stems from a previous arrangement uh, rate of 81.72 uh, per barrel. Uh, and that's representing some 5.41% increment in the average price uh, over the last two weeks. There's also the concern about the world fuel market, the fact that the global standard uh, and poor uh, platforms, uh, they are pointing to an average uh, 
uh, pricing window of January, which is showing an increase for all major finished petroleum uh, products. Uh, the price of gasoline and uh, gas oil increased by approximately 14% and 7.57% respectively. Beyond that as well, some more factors have been uh, pointed to uh, by that projection that we're seeing from IES. They're talking about, for instance, what's happening on the local um, market as well in terms of our forex. So data from IES Economic Desk uh, on the domestic foreign exchange uh, over the last two weeks shows that Ghana, the Ghana city has lost some 10.3% uh, of its value against the US dollar, uh, closing the window at some 12 point, uh, that's 12 cities 50 pesos to the US dollar from the previous rate of 11 uh, cities um, 30 pesos. So uh, these are some of the reasons for which IES is predicting uh, that we may be seeing a surge in fuel prices uh, at the pumps in the coming days. Well, uh, let's uh, expand the conversation and talk about how the gold for oil is impacting all of this. Uh, joining us via Zoom, Duncan Amwa is the Executive Secretary for COPEC. Uh, and we also have Yakubu Adam, who's a research and policy analyst for the Institute for Energy Security. Uh, Yakubu, since, of course, uh, the details we're dealing uh, with on the screens a couple of minutes ago uh, comes from IES, uh, just explain that to us. Um, have you been able to put a peg to it now in terms of the actual increment that we are able to, uh, or we may see at the pumps in the next few yeah, so, hours? Yes, yeah, so thank you very much for having me and good afternoon to your listeners. Uh, so if you look at currently at the pumps, the petrol, petrol for instance, buys for some uh, 13 cities, 58 pesos per liter, mm. whereas uh, diesel buys for 15 cities, 36 pesos per liter and LPG, that's on 12 cities, 69 pesos per kg. And putting together the factors you have named, the international prices of petroleum products, as well as the depreciation of the city, we are expecting that prices to do some 7 and 13 pesos, uh, 7 and 13 percent increments over the next two weeks in February. So when you do the computation, you would have petrol coming to some 15 cities diesel doing 16 cities, 73 pesos, and LPG doing some 13 cities, 98 pesos, respectively, over the next two weeks in February. Uh, there's a question as to why that's not, um, I mean, the, the gold for oil deal, as the BOG governor is uh, alluding to, is not having uh, that impact on, on the market. In his view, he feels it's working well, by the way, but we're not seeing uh, that effect at the pumps. Yes, because why we are not seeing the effect with the gold for oil policy is that the quantum of petroleum products that was brought in in the first uh, attempt by government was about 41,000 metric tons of diesel. And that is just about 25% of our consumption for a month. So you would realize that if you have just 25% being brought into the country, to how would, is that able to influence prices? when we do some 160,000 metric tons monthly. So if you do the numbers, you realize it was just a week's consumption. And so the market will eventually swallow it. So that is why we have called on government to make available the policy document so that we speak to details of the policy. Then we are able to tell how much government brings in at the end of every month. Because when you do the 41,000 metric tons, at the price government quoted, $40, $40 million, you realize the government bought it for a premium compared right. to what the market was doing at the time. Uh, Yakubu, just hold on for us because uh, the Chamber for Petroleum Consumers as well, they are equally concerned about the situation. I want to bring in Nankan Amwa, uh, who's joining us via phone. And Nankan Amwa, you just heard from the Central uh, Bank Governor. Uh, Dr. Artisan says the gold for oil deal is working. Uh, but you're raising concerns about how it's not uh, reflecting at the pumps. Uh, wh what do you feel is accounting for this? Well, uh, Blitz, I do think that genuinely uh, Ghana is uh, stuck with a couple of problems that we would need to find solutions to those challenges. Uh, gold for oil, unfortunately, might not be the solution uh, that you and I would need at this point uh, as far as the persistent uh, increases in fuel prices week in, week out is concerned. Uh, one of the major things I heard 
uh, yeah, Kubu talk about is to do with the local currencies a four months over the past two week window. Uh, so whilst we were busy clapping uh, for 41,000 metric tons uh, brought in, uh, you also had the city doing its own thing. And then international benchmarks were also inching up. And so the overall effect is that we have sold the 41,000 metric ton to the market already. Uh, you ask whether we recorded uh, even any slight or marginal uh, reductions in pump prices. Uh, the answer will be a no. Uh, we have monitored the pumps day in, day out. Uh, not a single of the OMTs who probably got uh, the gold for oil cargo uh, did any price adjustment downward. And so one will be wondering exactly what are we seeking to do? Are we just creating an importation space uh, now for some people to say that we brought in oil and that we've exchanged Ghana's gold for that oil and that we've been able to supply to the market, uh, whereas you and I, the consumers, uh, would not get any benefit thereon. It just becomes uh, quite moot uh, to continue to hinge our hopes on the gold for oil program, especially in view of the fact that 41,000 metric tons could not do anything to the market and that we still see in prices rather uh, ancient upwards. LPG is going to go by as much as 22, 23%. Uh, petrol diesel is still going to go up uh, by Wednesday. And so you end up wondering, uh, why would we now expose the Bank of Ghana to pre-finance the importation of fuel, uh, fuel trading, which could also lead to you know, losses eventually that may become public debt. We need to find solutions uh, to probably the currency uh, situation and also get bots to be yeah. repositioned uh, such that when international benchmarks uh, decline, we can have bots uh, stock up, awaiting uh, the other time when the price curve uh, is also pointing upward. Then bots could also stimulate the market. But as a stand, it looks as though we are banking too much of our hopes on gold for oil, yeah. uh, whose first consignment clearly okay. uh, has not been able to stimulate the market so, downwards as was expected. So, so now I want us to explore the solutions. Let me, let me start off with you, Yakubu. Where, where do we, um, of course, approach this issue from uh, in terms of uh, the remedial measures? Because the concern of the average Ghanaian is, let's try and work out the reduction in prices at the pumps. That, that's all we care about. That, uh, like my brother mentioned, Duncan, uh, that at times the international prices do come down, but the local forex displaces the marginal decrement. So we would be we're expecting that government would rather consider revamping of thought. We have made this course over and over again. The government is also looks elsewhere. And also, you know, the price buildup, there are some taxes in it. So government should clearly look at the tax elements and see what government can do in the short term to mitigate some of the challenges that consumers are likely to face with the price increments. Mm. So beyond that as well, the, there's the liquidity challenge that is facing many of the bulk oil distributors. Uh, is that also coming into the picture now, looking at what's happening um, to, to the fuel other pumps? Yeah, so when you look at the liquidity challenges, we know how much we need for the petroleum products at the end of the month. So the Bank of Ghana could work with the BDCs to get a reserve of the total amount of forex they receive at the end of every month to allocate it so that it's not so much exposed to some of these price hikes we see. But to wait for it to be at the time the importation is being done, then the, you have the BDCs running all over the place, chasing the currency. That, I think, is one of the issues that the Bank of Ghana really needs to look at because we know how much we need for the petroleum products at the end of every month. So we can readily make that available as a buffer so that they don't have to be on the market like any other person to change their money. And the concern of the average consumer as to how far this new projection will be taking us. What do you project on the market and how long are we to cope with this new price range? Yeah, so uh, for now, for the next two weeks, this is what we are expecting. 
But like we stated, the policy document on the gold for oil is not available, readily available. So until government policy thinks otherwise, for now, consumers will have to bear with the 7 to 13% projections we are seeing in the market in the next two weeks. Well, uh, Yakubu Adams, thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, let me wrap up with Duncan Amwa. Duncan, your projections going forward. And, and perhaps um, what do we need to do at the policy level as well uh, just to uh, change this narrative? You see, I started by indicating we do have clear challenges at the country. One of the biggest challenges we've had to do with the local currency and how to stabilize it. If government is able to assess 200,000 ounces of gold every month for gold for oil program, we do think that 200,000 ounces of gold each month will be a very good store of value to back the currency. Once your currency is good, you would not even need to have Bank of Ghana now uh, give money to PMMC to buy gold from the local mine, give it to an intermediary, uh, to now pay a certain oil trader to bring to boss to give to go. Oh, it's quite, quite complicated in there. And the moment any of these stages or layers that the gold for oil we've created become inefficient, it's just going to lead to public debt. And so we think that Bank of Ghana, for the 100 million that it could use to bring gold for oil, use that to back the local currency, use the gold as a good store of value. Give it to J.P. Morgan, if you may. I'm sure they would advance to you as much dollars as you want because they have the physical gold uh, that they can hold in trust. And that way, you probably will be able to hold uh, your currency uh, quite stable, such that the kind of prices that we are likely to see from when they could have been averted. Gold for oil may be good but not good or useful to Ghanaians at this point when all we are asking for is to get two oil prices uh, stabilized uh, for people to be able to plan their lives. Well, uh, Duncan Amwa, we're grateful that you've been able to join us here on The Pulse. Well, the dust is yet to settle on government's uh, domestic debt exchange program as individual bondholders have their fingers crossed that they will be completely exempt from the policy a measure which is being criticized as having the potential of wiping out uh, the investment of Ghana's middle class population. After a series of protests asking government to exempt individual bondholders, the Finance Ministry commissioned a technical committee to explore alternatives that will enable government exclude individual bondholders while maintaining uh, the, that target of 80% success rate of the domestic debt exchange program. Uh, with just a few hours to that deadline, individual bondholders allege that uh, the government, through the finance minister, has promised that he will exempt individual bondholders. Let's listen to lawyer Martin Gable. Friday was a big breakthrough, very massive. But you know, naturally, it had gone into the weekend, people were tired, and so there wasn't enough time to come and do a lot of radio and TV announcements of it, okay? It also ties... Because there's still on the table the uh, invitation, okay, the domestic debt exchange uh, program. Because it's still on the table, naturally it is, it is the case that he would still say that, oh, if you want to join, come and join. Okay. And of course, knowing the position he's taking, in his heart, he would have wished that we all come on board. So it's to be expected that as long as he hasn't closed the January 31st deadline, 
he would say he would not be willing to use the word you are exempted. No, because he wishes that we all join. Mm -hmm. But for all the reasons we've canvassed so far, showing that, look, these coupons are salaries to us. That's what we use in paying all our bills, etc. All the arguments we've made over the period, you see that we are unable to join. Mm -hmm. And so he still made that invitation several times, but we're very clear that respectfully, the, 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 the uh, promise that government will honor the existing bonds was sufficient for us. We want to hold on to what we have. Yes, you mm. see, that's it. But when is this promise um, taking effect, did he say? Let's, let's start with uh, the honoring of uh, the coupons and principles as they fall due. When did he say when exactly uh, that promise will take effect, do we know? Okay, so this is the way I understand it. It means that immediately, I know next month mm -hmm. there's going to be some about six point so billion, about, let's just say a little over a huge chunk of it okay. will be due next month, mm -hmm. right? Yes, several billions, let's put it that way. I didn't have the exact figure mm -hmm. here. It will be due next month. So it means that he's going to Anna. Yes. So it's immediate. It means that if Today, NA is due. You know, when you look on the uh, debt exchange mm -hmm. the program, there's a, a, a table showing what is due at what. Yeah, so all those, as they fall due, government will honor. Okay, but yeah. it's surprising that um, we have not heard mm -hmm. from government just yet mm -hmm. in terms of a communication of this, because I've seen that um, committee meeting and, of course, the outcome of your meetings, the technical committee meetings signed by Mr. Arkest and, of course, Senior Jose on one side. But we are yet to get an official communication from government on this. Do we have any indication as to when exactly that will come? Because we've seen Ghana Association of Bankers and Ministry of Finance, there's a joint statement, communicating the agreement on this. We've seen Ghana Insurance Association and also the GSIA and this. When are we expecting an official communication from government? Do we have any indication? Uh, yes, so we are still talking to the minister. Okay. We are still talking to him, trying to see how soon that can be done. It's well, in what appears to be a sharp departure from uh, that promise, the Office of the Finance Minister uh, is uh, making statements which suggest that a total exemption may no longer be the case. Uh, well, the finance minister has put that uh, on uh, social media, indicating that the individual bond holders remain invited. At this point, I want to bring uh, Dr. Michael uh, Adongo, a development economist, who is joining us via Zoom. Thank you, Doc, for your time. Uh, so that the clock is ticking, obviously. Here we are, and uh, the individual bondholders want a total exemption. Many say that given what uh, government has secured with the banking sector and the uh, securities and insurers um, industry, uh, we're well on cost to securing an IMF deal without the individual bondholders. Where do you stand on this? Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, we wouldn't say that it is enough to secure an IMF deal. We will not say that it has more or less proven that Ghana has some uh, sustainable uh, debt uh, trajectory. All it would prove is that given the existing context and the fact that we are having litigations all over, pointing to a fact that the Minister of Finance hasn't got the mandate and legitimacy to secure comprehensive participation in the debt exchange program. The IMF may look at these variables and then say, uh, given what is at stake, to give them a reprieve and then uh, maybe take the process forward. But it is in no way uh, indicative that Ghana can achieve some sustainable debt uh, uh, trajectory without the participation of all the uh, bondholders or all the categories of uh, uh, creditors in the domestic front that government included in the debt exchange program. So it's an issue of there is no other option rather than we have reached the point where we think we have some success. So if you ask me, I think that government has been cavalier with the approach to which is handling this debt exchange program, has adopted game theoretic approach 
uh, have truth misinformation, and that has not uh, uh, led to some confidence in the whole process. As a result, the exchange uh, market and all the other indicators are suffering. And many uh, are beginning to see that uh, government hasn't got the ability and the mandate to pursue a comprehensive debt exchange program. So as it is now, it is about what the IMF is willing to accept, not an issue of we getting to a point where we say, yes, with this, Ghana can recover. Well, the finance minister is yet to make that pronouncement. Well, what's your expectation uh, of, that, of the minister? I expect the finance minister to announce that it is proceeding with the debt exchange program with or without the participation of the individual bondholders. But I still expect it to extend to them an only branch and an opportunity for them to uh, join in. Given how the finance minister has been behaving, I expect that the finance minister will try to threaten them and tell them that if they don't participate in the program, the likelihood of this suffering significant uh, loss of value in their holdings is high, and uh, it may lead to some forms of uh, defaults and uh, other uh, forms of uh, non-compliance with the uh, uh, agreements that the debt individual bondholders are going to suffer. So, yes, it is going to announce that it is going. It is going to announce that it has a way forward. But I don't think that it will be enough for us to secure debt sustainability. It may just be enough but I have to be willing to look at it and maybe suggest alternatives to us. But as it stands now, I don't think the Minister of Finance has many options on his table. The announcement is going to make is one of failure. He may try to present it as some success, but largely he has not been able to convince these individual bondholders to participate in the debt exchange program because of the take it, uh, take it or leave it approach that he has been using and has not adopted an approach where the individual bondholders have an option to maybe engage government and reach an amicable uh, solution. So it, is, it has all the handwritings of the authoritative approaches the okay. Minister of Finance has used, rather than maybe people not willing to sacrifice for this country. Okay, but for the individual bondholders, uh, what options are available to them now? Many of them looking for return on in their investments. Uh, do they still have a window uh, given what's happening in terms of our domestic debt exchange program? Yes, I think that they have a choice. That's what the minister, that's what the minister has been trying to do all along, to divide their front. So I think the minister will still try to do that, leave the window open for those who want to uh, maybe jump in at the last minute. The minister may try to paint some dire consequences for non-participation, and those that may flinch uh, will jump in. But as it stands now, I don't think that the minister can do anything. The other alternative is that, yes, if we don't succeed with the debt exchange program, we're going to have serious distortions in our market, serious distortions in the banking sector. And uh, uh, the continued uh, decline in the value of the city will also mean that uh, everyone who was born in CDs is going to also suffer that. So it's a, a choice for individual bondholders. It's a rock and a hard place. Do we hold out and see what happens or we participate in the debt exchange program? Going forward, uh, what projections are you having about, uh, I mean, looking at the success rate of the domestic exchange program uh, and its likely impact on the IMF austerity plan that we have um, coming up, of course, government is targeting the first quarter of this year. Are we still on course? Yes, uh, we have fixed signals that the discourse around uh, the IMF and uh, other lenders is for them to seek out every possible means to help Ghana. They desire to help Ghana come out of this in the international community is high. And that is because Ghana is, remains one of the few examples of a democracy. And if Ghana fails, uh, you have no case to make concerning democracy, delivering good governance, and also uh, economic development for people. Mm. So people see Ghana's failure as a failure of the democracy, the failure of uh, the democratic experiment. And they are doing all they can to ensure that uh, Ghana succeeds. So I would say that, yes, 
we may not be able to succeed in the domestic debt exchange program, but we may get some uh, approval or some kind of uh, assistance from the IMF because the desire and the commitment to get Ghana to succeed is very high. That is the only reason why Ghana has a chance with the IMF. But as it stands now, it had it been any other country with maybe a deplorable human rights record, a pariah nation, you would have expected that they would go a long way. But the desire to just have Ghana to succeed is so high. And I'm counting on that to see Ghana through. And having said that, I think that government also has to demonstrate uh, a desire and a commitment to uh, cut down its expenditure and implement programs based on its uh, uh, budgets. I think if we pursue that path, uh, we should be able to uh, win the confidence of people and get people to be willing to sacrifice a little more for this country. As it stands now, nobody wants to lift a finger, nobody wants to lose a city because the other side of Ghana is living as if nothing has happened. And where the rest of us live, which is the ordinary economy, we suffer and we sacrifice every day. And coming to ask us to sacrifice a little more, whilst you do virtually nothing to, 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 to support our recovery, it's not something you can sell to an individual bondholder. The, the next phase of this will be the external debt exchange. Uh, do, 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 do you feel that, that that may be difficult as compared to what's ha happened uh, here within the market itself? If you are the Minister of Finance, that is a place you don't want to go because it has implications. You may not be able to return to the capital markets after you do your standard debt restructuring. It may take a very long time before people start listening to any offer you make. So, yes, it is a necessary evil, mm. but the fallout from that is not going to be something easy. So that is why government has been dragging its feet, hoping that it can find other alternatives and not uh, try to restructure external debt, especially those from the Eurobond markets. But as we stand now, we do not have uh, alternatives. The failure in the domestic debt exchange program means that we have to increasingly rely on a, a wider net of exter external creditors to be able to achieve uh, some form of debt uh, sustainability. So I expect the government to cast its net uh, deep and wide and try to catch as many debt uh, uh, creditors as possible. Uh, I'm seeing a situation where government may want to uh, uh, engage uh, the, uh, the British Woods institutions and other multinationals for uh, some form of uh, debt relief or extended debt uh, uh, suspension on some, and then maybe try to negotiate uh, for restructuring of others. I think that if we use those combinations of options, at the end of the day, we should be able to secure some form of a uh, program. But it is going to come on the back of, you are taking this, you are going, and you're going to be generating revenue. Mm. You cannot come back to this market anytime soon. And I, I believe that should be uh, something that everyone in government should have gotten used to by now. Right. Dr. Michael Adongo, we're grateful uh, for your time here on The Pulse. You're watching The Pulse. We'll be back shortly.